Hey guys, Mangrel here. Welcome back to the channel. And I'm really excited to look at these two SpeedyB flight controller stacks. And these are what I'll be using in my next builds, a five inch freestyle build and a three inch freestyle build. This one here is the SpeedyB F7 Mini. So this is good for my three inch build. And this guy here is the SpeedyB F7 V3. So latest and greatest released uh, fairly recently. So I'll use this for my five inch build. And those of you who have been following this channel know that I'm a iFlight stack kind of guy. So this guy here is my five inch and you can see I've got a success F7 from iFlight in there. Also my two three inch freestyles, those also have a iFlight F7 mini in them. And I've been quite happy with the iFlight stacks, seems to be working very well. I've only burnt out one of them in my three or four years of FPV. And I think it's because I crashed in snow so really happy with these. But what I'm finding is the latest release from iFlight, their, their stacks, they just seem a little bit too gimmicky for my taste. So they're really weirdly shaped. They have a capacitor hanging at the bottom. Just seems like it'll be very difficult to work with them. So I wanted to find a stack that kind of was a no frills, high quality, packs full of feature kind of stack. And that's where I came across these two. So big thanks to SpeedyB for giving me a discount on these. Now I did pay for them, but they were nice enough to give me a discount so I can get my hand on these and also make this video. So in this video, I'm gonna open these up. We'll do a little bit of an unboxing. We'll look at what's included. We'll take a look at some features and functionality. And then in subsequent videos, I'll go ahead and use these in a the build. We'll do test flights and so forth. Let's start with the F7 Mini first, which comes with a 35 amp BL Heli S 4-in-1 ESC. It's good for 3S over to 6S. So when I open this up, first thing I notice is we have a QR code to the manual and the app. So the app lets you modify your beta flight settings, do firmware flashing, all that good stuff. Also, the manual is very well written. It's a lot of details. Uh, it's got good pictures in there. So already off to a very good start. In terms of the boards, we've got here our speed controller, and then here we have our flight controller. So let's take a quicker look at that. So I'll start with the ESC first. And first thing I notice on the ESC is I really like the color scheme. The blue and yellow works for me. I love the fact that we have holes here for the capacitor. And also this cutout here is supposed to allow you to have better clearance with your camera. So if your camera is very close to here, it makes sure they don't interfere. I see we have good amount of capacitors here for filtering. And as I mentioned, this has the BL Heli S, which in you know, 2023, 2022 is less of an issue because we have a firmware called BlueJay, which is what this comes with. And BlueJay gives you a lot of those features that were previously only on BL Heli 32. So things like higher or lower PWM frequency, we've got that. Um, RPM filtering, we got that as well. So no concerns here. I also like the fact that we've got breakouts here for this connector. So if ever this connector breaks or you want shorter or longer cables, you can use these solder points to access that connector. So that's amazing, like to see that. And ignore the solder here. I've already done some playing around with this. That's what the solder is. In terms of the flight controller, first thing I love is the fact that it's got USB-C. I find USB-C is stronger, more resilient, but also because DJI uses this as well, it just means I carry one cable versus multiple cables with me. I like how all these solder points are nicely labeled. So the iFlight doesn't do that. I see we have status LEDs. We have the antenna for the SpeedyB app, which is the Bluetooth antenna. Mine says F7 mini version two. So I guess there's two versions of this. What else? Oh, there's the processor. So it has the F7 processor. That's nice and strong. Oh, that's unfortunate. So this connector here does not have the breakouts. So that kind of defeats the purpose of having the breakouts. So if this breaks your SOL, unfortunately, a couple of things to bear in mind. So first of all, this only has eight megabytes of onboard flash. So I know my iFlight has 32 megabytes, which already is on the low side. So you gotta bear that in mind if you're doing black box logging, you have to be very careful of how you manage that space. Also in terms of regulators, it's got a five volt and a nine volt. So the five volt is rated at 2.5 amps, that's perfect. 
but the 9 volt is only rated at 2 amps, which is perfectly fine for the old air unit. But the new one, the O3, uses a lot more power. And I think the latest guidance, and I got this from Matt's tech, he suggests we look for about 14 watts. So 9 volts at 2 amps, that's 18 watts. So we still are okay. We have a little bit of kind of leeway there or headroom. So that's fine. The other thing to bear in mind is we are limited to only four motors on this. So we see there are no additional motor pads, which again, is fine for my use case. Uh, next, we only have three UARTs. So you can see we've got UART 1, 2, and 3. And the other two UARTs are kind of used by other aspects of this. So the other two UARTs are used, first of all, for the SpeedDB app. The Bluetooth requires a UART plus the speed controller for telemetry uses a UART as well. So you only have three, which is perfect for most people. So me, I have my DJI Air units, so I've got one. I've got my receiver, that's two. So I still have one free, but better than mine, if you have a lot of, kind of peripherals and a lot of other devices, three may not be enough for you. And the final thing to bear in mind is this does have a BMI 270 gyro on there which is fine. It looks like most speed controllers in 2023, or not speed controllers, flight controllers in 2023 use the BMI anyway. But the unfortunate thing is the BMI is limited to 3.2K. So you know, we have this really powerful F7 processor, but at 3.2K, we can't really leverage a lot of that kind of oomph and power of the processor. So back in the day, you know, the iFlight one I've got can run 4K or, or 8K because it has the ICM gyro. That's not the case here, but I think most people won't notice the loss of kind of refresh rate. So this should be fine for that purpose. So this doesn't have any quick connects. So you see the only connector is this, which means whatever you're attaching to this will be through these soldered points, which for me, that's perfect. I like that nice, secure soldered connection. But if you're a newcomer, maybe not as proficient in soldering, just bear that in mind before you purchase this. And accessories, of course, we have an XT30. We've got cable and capacitor, so no surprise there. We've got our, ooh, this is nice. We have an M3 mounting package. So we have gummies and screws for M3. And then I'm guessing this one here is for the M2. Yeah, there we go. Next, we have the F7 V3. This comes with the BL Heli 32 50 amp ESC, which is also good for 3S to 6S. And what you'll find with SpeedDB is they actually test the speed controllers at full power for 30 seconds, just to make sure that it actually can withstand that. But similarly here, we have the QR code to the manual and the app, so we can modify the settings on the field. That's great. Manual on this one's even better than the mini. So this manual goes through a lot of details, pictures, connection diagrams. So amazing job on this one too. And we can see that it's looking beautiful. Different color scheme here. So here we've got black and yellow versus the mini, which is blue and yellow. But this looks really, really good. So let's start with the ESC first, exactly what we did for the mini. And this is very beefy. Just like look at that heat sink on there. I love the fact that we have the holes for the capacitor again. We have the cutout here for a camera for better clearance. So a lot of the features of the Mini are on this as well. And we can see very, very beefy MOSFETs there. We have the breakouts as well for the connectors. Again, lots of things on the Mini are on here as well. We've got our diode to make sure that this is protected. And on the front, I can't really see what's in there, but I see a lot of capacitors. Yeah, this looks very, very good. Happy so far. Let's look at our flight controller. And on the flight controller, again, we've got USB-C, which I like to see because, I, again, as I mentioned, it's very resilient, means I only carry one cable. I've got the F7 processor here, which is great. I've got LEDs here. And, and I mean, this, I don't see the point of this, but, but fine. It's a battery meter. So it tells you, are you at 25%, 50, 75, 100% battery? So, okay, that's that's fine. I won't. I probably won't use it, but at least it's there. We've got a barometer. So this is a BMP280 barometer. We've got our antenna for the SpeedyB Bluetooth. 
status LEDs. And the cool thing here is they've done a really good job of laying out these pads so that they're grouped together. For example, they say, you know, if you want your receiver, use this group up here. You want your camera, use this grouping. They've done a really good job of organizing this. Now, the really amazing thing, and they've, they've made sure to point this out, is 500 megabytes of onboard flash. Whereas the Mini had like eight, which is barely anything. This guy has 500, which is too much. But again, that's, that's amazing to see. We've got a protection diode. Oh, this is nice. We have breakouts for the connector. So this is exactly how it should be. Both sides should have breakouts. So good job on the V3 here. We've got lots of quick connects. This is like quick connect galore. So whatever you want, I'm sure you can do a quick connect on it. The other thing to bear in mind also is it comes with a very, very powerful regulator. So the five volt is nothing to you know be excited about. It's five volt at two amps, which you know, it's, it's fine, nothing too exciting. Now the nine volt regulator, so the nine volt regulator is nine volts at four amps. That's insane. So I think you know, if you have two amps at nine volts, you're, you're good for most use cases. But I think the thinking here is you can run a lot of peripherals on this. So four amps, that's that's above and beyond. So that's amazing. Now the other thing to bear in mind is the four V5. So this power connection, so any of the four V5s, they work with the USB cable connected, which is good. So that's what they suggest you use for your receiver. So that way when you have the receiver or the USB connected, the receiver also gets activated. That's a good feature on this, with the Mini does not have, unfortunately. So I like that. Uh, the other thing, very similar to the Mini, it this, this does use the BMI270 gyro, which again, you know, we've got an F7 processor, lots of horsepower, lots of oomph, but the BMI gyro is limited to 3.2K, which means we can't even leverage that power to drive, you know, 4K or 8K. But it looks like BMI 270 is the uh, standard that's used for 2022, 2023 anyway. So can't really get away from that. And I don't think most people will recognize or feel the difference. And in terms of the accessories, I expect a lot more cables and wires and things. So first here I see, yeah, this is good. We have a lot of gummies and screws and things. It comes with a... I believe it's a thousand microfarad, yeah, a thousand microfarad capacitor, which is great. XT60, so that's good as well. We've got the connecting cable for the um, speed controller to the flight controller. It only comes with the cable for the old style air unit. So this is the uh, original, the OG, the OG air unit, which I don't think most people run nowadays anyway. I don't see anything here for the O3. It's a little bit unfortunate. We have here cables for camera, camera, camera. What else do we have? We have cables here for RX, VTX, GPS, GPS. So that's good. Oh, and that's all we have. So hopefully you like this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos where I actually install these. I take them out in the field, test flights, and so forth.